Okay, so now that the back panel has been taken off, uh, what you're looking at is the uh, power supply motherboard um, that is responsible for powering the monitor, uh, which is this yellow board right here. Um, this does have to be unscrewed and removed. Uh, that's not difficult to do. Uh, what you have to do is just unplug uh, this wiring right here. And then there are two uh, switches right here that are wired in that you can pull out. These are just plastic tabs that you lift up and pull out. Um, after doing that, you just unscrew the two screws here, one screw here in the middle, and then this board slides out. Um, this is the, the root of our problem. Uh, if you can take a look here. Yes, I know, Ziggy. No, don't eat that. Don't eat the solder. Hey, be good. Uh, so if you look down here, you'll notice that uh, the reason why our monitor is having trouble powering on uh, off of a cold start is because we've got two capacitors uh, that are blown. Now, the way that you can determine whether or not a capacitor is good or if it's broken and needs to be replaced is good capacitors like these two right here have smooth flat tops and bad capacitors have a bubbling on top of them. Um, and you can also notice there's actually some browning right here. So what we have to do is get some replacement capacitors, uh, obviously remove these two old capacitors from the power supply, and then uh, put new capacitors in to replace them. That should fix the problem. Uh, a little bit of information about the uh, stock capacitors that come with Samsung monitors. This monitor is uh, about five years old, and when it was constructed, it was made with uh, these Chinese brand capacitors called Capson, um, which aren't very high quality. Get out of there. Don't lick the capacitor. Uh, and under certain conditions like heat uh, <clears throat> or different climates, they actually won't last as long as they should. Uh, the replacement capacitors that we've purchased are these capacitors right here from a company called Illinois Capacitor. And uh, you can find these off of any uh, General Electric uh, website that sells capacitors. Okay, Z, you're going to have to... Get out of here so we can finish the video, buddy. Um, just make sure that when you're ordering replacement capacitors, you have the, uh, the voltage and the capacitance correct. These two capacitors here are wired in parallel, uh, and they're of 25 volts and 820 microfarads. Uh, these other capacitors here, um, I actually don't know the values of because it doesn't look like we have to replace them. But any capacitor will say what the voltage and capacitance is on the side. And that will allow you to, to search the internet or, or an online catalog to figure out what uh, specifically you need. Um, I have seen videos on YouTube where people will get uh, general stock capacitors from a place like Radio Shack um, that don't necessarily fit the, uh, the perfect capacitance and the voltage that are specifically made for the motherboard. I don't like doing that. Um, but there are examples of uh, folks with monitors similar to mine where they've used, um, you know, for example, a uh, capacitor that's 1,000 microfarads instead of 820. Uh, upping the voltage shouldn't be a problem. So if you happen to be, you know, near a general store that sells capacitors that match the capacitance but are higher in voltage, um, that shouldn't be a problem. So uh, what I'm going to do is disassemble this board, uh, remove it from the panel. And uh, using a soldering iron and a uh, three millimeter in diameter rosin solder, uh, we're going to remove the, the old caps and put the new uh, fresh caps on. And then we'll uh, power the monitor on and see if that fixes the problem.